Anyway, I came up with a scheme, uh, which was uh, very often does happen with manic depressives. That it was a scheme that would make a lot of money. And it was quite a clever idea. Um, but, like a lot of these things, I hadn't quite thought it through completely. Anyway, in the end it took me to New York twice, and somebody in New York had said to me, I think it's great, Jeremy, your idea. If you really get everything you say you're going to get, um, you know, all these groups you're going to get for this idea, he said, I'm, I, I mean, I'd give you as much as five million dollars you know, for South America. Now, this actually happened. So you remember the five million dollars, so yeah. I just went, five million, well, that's all, I've got five million dollars, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Forget the fact that I hadn't got any of the groups. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and in the end, I ended up in New York. I had two armed bodyguards, 24 hours a day, <laughs> two stretch Cadillacs, you know, because you could only travel with two stretch yeah. Cadillacs. A suite in the Carlisle, um, which was probably the best hotel at the time. Um, and I was having parties and, you know, and I was just, I was just, it was all very clear that I was just waiting to um, make some major deal there that would make it all all right. Yeah. It was completely out of control. Yeah. Completely. Um I mean, I was earning £150 a week. Yeah. So you ended up in the Priory after that? I did. Yeah. I did. Which was a lovely place. And I then ended up at a much, uh, you know, a very good hospital, which is called um, the Royal Bethlehem, the Bethlehem Royal Hospital. Oh, West Wickham, yeah. Mm. I used to live in Shirley, which... Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, that's... Um, that's a serious hospital. Um, we used to be warned, because I was a kid then, we were warned not to go near it, because that was the loony bin, they called yeah, it. Yeah, no, I'm sure, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, that was serious, and I, that was the first time, you yeah. know, because you don't go to somewhere like that, yeah. um, you know, to get your nails done, you know. I mean, you know, it was a serious place. It was a shock to be in there, was it? It was a big shock to be in there, yeah. because also with this condition when you're in that state it's like being on a massive drug massive uh, um it takes a while to come down so when you go in do they put you on drugs how do they work just briefly well i was i mean to, to to get out of new york my i was very lucky i had two great friends who were in new york at the time who knew immediately when they came i summoned them to the hotel because I wanted, I needed cash. Yeah. And they came to the hotel and knew there was something wrong, and they organised a doctor, and they were just oh, lucky. Yeah. They got a doctor who was English, and it was his key subject. And in the end, he said to, he came to see me because I was been up for four nights. Huh. And he said, um, he he was very clever. He said, uh, you know, basically, I think you've got, uh, you've got terrible flu. And I said, well, look, I don't have time for flu, you know, sort it out, you know, and get on with it. And, uh, and he said, well, right, OK. And he said, uh, oh, I know. Why don't we give you a B15 shot? And I said, well, you know, why haven't you already given me a B15 shot? Because that's, you know, that's how you are. I had also elevated myself to the peerage. Um, at that point, by the way. So you call yourself Lord? Lord Thomas. Well, everyone called, <laughs> everyone called me Lord Thomas because... And everybody believed it. Because that's what happens. Everyone believes everything you say because yeah, yeah. it is convincing. Yeah. So he had to call me Lord Thomas the whole time, this doctor. <laughs> and so he said, Lord Thomas, can I give you, you know, a B15 shot? And it was great. And I said, well, why haven't you done this before? You know, you fool. Yeah. Of course you can. And he said, it is quite a difficult, you know, shot. You know, it's an intramuscular, but it's very, very good. Yeah. It means you'll never have flu again. So I went, get on with it, you know. Yeah. And I remember him giving me this awful injection, thinking, God, that bloody hurt. And and they all had their, their watches. They were all timing it, you know. So it's going to knock you out, basically, whatever it was. Yes, yeah. but in fact, it didn't. 
It oh. didn't knock me out. It didn't knock me out for another three hours. But um, that is enough to knock out, um, you know, a serious racehorse. Um, yeah. Or two serious racehorses. So <laughs> when I came back to, to, to London, it was all... They'd you know, organise you to... I think I think in your in your book it says there's a there was a car on the ta- tarmac and you're whisked straight in the car and then that's right. Yeah. Well, I, the only way my my long suffering brother had basically tried to persuade me to come back before the yeah. injection yeah. and and I said I, he he said to me, look, there's a health farm. You know, you could stay in the health farm. Yeah. Princess Diana's there at the moment, and I said, oh, she, well, might, might be interesting. And um, and I said, well, I'm only coming if you get me a fl- first-class ticket. Uh, so that I was the only yeah. person who's ever flown first-class and slept all the way on New Year's Eve flight back huh. to, from New York to London. Anyway, so you were in the you were in the Priory to start with. Yeah. Um, at what stage did you get this diagnosis that you actually had something tangible wrong? Well, I think after uh, after three or four weeks of being there, they. You know, they the worked kind of it diagnosis, out. Diagnosis, yeah. They worked it out. It, it's uh, it, the the difficulty is you need you need to talk to other people, yeah. Because the person suffering this is an unreliable witness. You know, they don't know themselves. Sure. You know, because as far as I was concerned, I'd just overdone it slightly. No, I understand. That was all it was. I'd just overdone it. So. Well, how did you feel when you got the diagnosis? Was it a relief or was it a No, surprise? it was a great disappointment. Disappointment. Because well, you thought actually you were being relatively normal. It was a great disappointment. Um, the diagnosis and the final coming down to earth. Uh, and I think I, might, I had a lovely girlfriend at the time who, who resigned her commission, um, as it were, when I was in hospital. And... It was probably a very good thing she did that because that was what really brought me down to earth. Yeah. And I suddenly realised, you know, all this power had disappeared. And it was disappointing because I felt... I, I had felt that a lot of the power was real, if that makes sense, that a lot of this confidence, massive confidence, yeah. was real. Um, and in fact, it wasn't. Uh, it was. It was. Well, the confidence was real, but the basis on which it was built wasn't real. You um, had the confidence. The, well, the, but, yes, but the the grounding wasn't there. Yes, I yeah. mean the illness gives you that yeah. confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, almost, almost like a drug. Yeah. Yeah, and so I think when we talked before the programs, we started recording this program. You were. You were saying there was a critical point where you realised you had to actually take it seriously and start taking medication on a regular basis. How long did it take you to get to that point? That took about um, that took about two or three years, and yeah. I think that basically, you know, when a lot of people get this diagnosis, they don't want it. Of course, nobody wants to be different from the pack, you know. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I certainly didn't. And I wanted to... I really wanted to... My main concern was to get back up there and recover yeah. my former glory. So I was, I was I was told that I should take lithium every day. And I took it when I felt like it. Yeah. So what does lithium actually do? Lithium is a salt. Um, and... The basic theory uh, that a lot of people have about manic depressives is that you lack, your brain lacks uh, the salt. Okay. Um, we don't have enough of it. And uh, it's a mood stabiliser um, and something that prevents you from going psychotic, bonkers in layman's terms, yeah. or completely um, you know, suicidal. It isn't actually an antidepressant, but uh, and that's that's what it does. And it was invented by an Australian in I think nineteen forty six. Okay. 